Hi, it's Aga from RV's Artist and today I love to come back to the summer memories and create a cinemagraph of the image I've creating during the summertime. In this video we'll be working on a cinemagraph like this. If you haven't watched my video on how to create photorealistic water with caustics, you might be interested in taking a look. I put the link in the corner. For those who haven't seen my previous videos, a quick explanation what a cinemograph is. So basically, it's a combination of a still image and animation or video. I put the links in the corner of other cinemograph videos for your reference. Okay, without any further ado, let's go to the software. Let me quickly show you how the visualization looks so far and what we have. Start interactive rendering. Okay, great. So in the video I've mentioned before, I applied the displace modifier on the water object. The map, in our case, is a noise map. If we change the shaded display from object to material color, you'll be able to see it clearly in the viewport. Now let's go back to the material editor. You can see that there is this red mark here. It means that the parameter is animated. If you want to animate a noise map, this is basically the parameter you need to animate. Let me show you how it works. Ok, so you can see that water is moving when I'm changing the value. Now I show you what to do to animate this parameter. Be sure you have the time slider set up at frame 0. Click Auto key. Move the time slider to the last frame and change the parameter. I change it to 2. Let's see how it looks. We can play the preview so it will show us the actual speed. As this preview is looped, you can notice the transition between the first and the last frame. So if you want to create the water animation, it will be basically it. We will need to only adjust the speed and the frame rate. But as we want to create a cinemograph, we need to somehow make a seamless transition between the start and end frame. So let me show you the trick that will make the job done. I copy the noise map. And I change the phase parameter to minus 1 at the starting point. So it will finish at the phase value equals 0. It's like moving this back by 2. So this map works from minus 2 to 0 and the original one from 0 to 2. Our goal here will be to mix these maps together to make the transition smooth. Plug maps to the correct slot. We cannot simply change the value of the mix amount. We need to animate this as we want to blend this together differently depending on the frame to achieve the seamless transition. Click Auto key. And let's animate the mix amount value. So at the starting point, the value will be 0. So at the first frame, we'll use 100% of the first map. Then go to the last frame and set the value to 100. In this case, there will be 100% of the second map used. Let's unplug both maps for a moment. You can see that at the first frame, the color of the mix map is black and as we move towards the last frame, it's getting more and more white. And finally, the last frame is fully white. Actually, I can show you easily how it works. Ok, let's plug the maps again. To see how it will work at our water object, we need to change the map in the displace modifier to our newly created mix map. We can play the preview now. You can notice that when the maps are blended, the mixed map is less contrasting. So this influences the water look, as the waves effect is weaker. In order to increase the contrast, we can use an output map. I plug the mix map to the map slot. Let's move the slider somewhere in the middle to see the map when two basic ones are blending. 
output amount will make our texture brighter or darker. RGB offset adds contrast or removes it. I'll make this value around minus 0.3 as I want this to be contrasty. And I brighten this up now with another parameter. Actually, I remove this contrast a bit. You can move the original map next to the new one, so it's easier to adjust. You can easily see now that we need a bit more of contrast. And maybe I make it slightly brighter. Nice, but it's not finished yet. We need to animate these values, as the level of contrast is different depending on the frame. So let's click on Auto key again. You can change the values and come back to the previous ones, just to set the proper keys on the current frame. Now, let's go back to the start frame and set default values. And do the same for the end frame. This way we have similar map contrast on all the frames. Ok, so we finished with water animation. But in real life, the flamingo will move with water as well. So let's work on this a bit now. Go to the helpers panel and choose a dump. Let's go to the animation panel and choose option attachment constraint. Click on the water. So you can see that the dummy is moving accordingly with water. Now let's position the dummy in the correct place. So it will be in the center of the flamingo. Oh, I've forgotten to change the time slider. Let's click no here and move the time slider to the frame zero. Now set the position. Ok, I scale the dummy to make it easier to see it. Now I link the dummy with the flamingo so it will move the same as the dummy. Here we go. I think that the water works nice but the flamingo is moving too much. I'd like to adjust it. In order to do it, I create a copy of the water and I will change parameters only here. I rename it. Let's make it non-renderable. Go to Object Properties and uncheck this option. Let's decrease the strength. Maybe let's start with 10 mm. Still too much. 5 mm. I go even lower. Ok, I think that works nice. Now, let's quickly see the preview for different frames. Start interactive rendering. We're missing the motion blur effect. It typically adds a lot of photorealism to the image. Let's turn the option geometry on as we have objects animated. I decrease the value of shutter speed as this is the parameter responsible for motion blur. If you don't know what is it and how it works, watch the video where I explained the camera basics. I put the link in the corner. In this example, it's not really visible as it's moving pretty slow. I turn this off as it will make our rendering much longer and will be practically not visible. Ok, we're done. The last step, the frame range. Go to render settings. We need to change the start range from 0 to 1. Let me quickly show you why we need to do this. I go back to the material editor. You can see that this map at frame 0 has face value equal to 0. And another map has value 0 at the last frame. 
So basically, if we have two frames with the same effect, the transition will be visible during the looping. I hope you enjoyed our time together and you're inspired to create your own cinemographs. If you want to go to the next level and learn how to create outstanding animations, you may be interested in our animation course. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye-bye!